Welcome to the July 26, 2019 video version of the Wagner Daily. My name is Rick Petticelli, and as usual, once a week, this video replaces the written commentary portion of our report. So let's get to the charts. The Nasdaq Composite broke out to a new swing high on Wednesday, and that was reversed immediately the following day on a pickup in volume. And in the short term, if the breakout day's low does not hold, which is also in line with the 10-day MA. If the price action doesn't hold here, then we could see a pullback into the 20-day EMA and a, a possible undercut of this prior low here. And in the S&P 500, there was a slight move to new highs. That didn't hold as well as the price action basically uh, pulled back into the 10-day MA and the prior day's low. So if the 2-day low here does not hold, then look for a test of the 20 and a potential undercut of this swing low here. IWM had that nice uh, move out on Wednesday and it pretty much erased three quarters of that move Thursday, but it did hold up at the downtrend line and the 10 day MA. Let me see if I can put a five day EMA up here. And it closed around the five MA, which is turned up. so. So if IWM can stay above 155 and while it chops around and digests the, the past two days of price action, uh, that, that would be positive. MDY, same boat, a little bit more strength though. Held above the downtrend line, breakout. Uh, it's above the 5-day MA, above the 9 or 10-day MA and 20. So looking pretty good. I think it's fine as long as it holds above this 355-ish area. It could chop around and go sideways, so looking pretty Pretty good right now. When we are operating under a buy signal and most broad market averages are acting well, our main concern really becomes identifying pockets of strength. During any good market rally, we're going to see stocks fall in and out of favor over a six to eight week move in the major averages. So more so than trying to figure out if the, the market is going to pull back in for a few days, we're more concerned with what industry groups are looking good right now, what's acting well right now. So when we run our scans at night and after we're, we're done flagging our stocks that we like, we put them onto a list and then we sort them by industry groups and we just try to see what's in favor. All right, let's move on to open positions. On Thursday, we sold FNKO. We entered around uh, 7, on 7.15, around 22.20. And uh, we sold around 23.80 for about almost an 8% gain. Uh, we decided just to take the the money and run with um, with there being quite a bit of overhead resistance. And we certainly did like the trade when we put it on. But sometimes there's other stocks that we find that we like a little bit better. So we just exit out of one trade and try to get into another. So we're currently long FSLY from our entry above this, I believe this inside day here on 7.19. And it followed through on a pickup in volume. Yesterday it looks pretty good. It's above the 5, 10, and 20-day EMAs. Uh, volume's picking up at the right time. Cyber, we're long from a breakout above this 130 area. We're about uh, 12 to 13% in the money right now. It's looking pretty good. It has earnings on 8.7. I think as long as it continues to hold this uptrend line here, which is kind of in line with the 10 day MA should be okay. ZNGA, we're long from 640-ish on uh, 719, so right above here. It tried to fall through install today. Um, ideally, we'd like to see the price action hold above Thursday's low, maybe chop around for a day or two, and then retake Thursday's high. And twist, we're long from 2940 on, seven, on 716, which is right here. So we're up about 7.6%. Had some wild action the past few days, uh, and that's why we'd like to see it hold above the 20-day EMA from here on out. And ZS, we're long from 78.21 on 7.1, which is right here. And we're up about 11% right now. So this is the tight price action at the highs. Broke out on a pickup in volume on Wednesday. Failed to follow through on Thursday but did trade in a pretty tight range and held on to the 5-day MA. So this 2-bar combo looks pretty good. If it can clear the 2-day high, 
within the next day or two, it could be off to the races. And DXCM, we're long from an average price of 145.70. So around here, we have a really good average. And uh, we're looking for the price action to follow through above 153.50, which is the pivot. Uh, there were several failed attempts to push through that pivot in the past two weeks. And over the past two days, the price has tightened up and the volume has dried up. So you can see the dry up in volume here. So I think DXCM is getting pretty close to moving out one way or another. And um, it reports earnings next Wednesday. So if we can get a move out, we might hold through the report. If there's no move out, we might sell half our position and hold the rest through earnings with a small buffer. If it sells off into the report, though, we may uh, trim most of the position and take a very small position into earnings or sell the full position. It just depends. And GCOS is a new entry. So this is sort of like a, a cup, and there's this multi-week handle here. There's one downtrend line. Here's another. We entered over the highs of this uh, reversal candle on 723 on 724. It looked pretty good on um, the close 724, but there was no follow through and immediately uh, gapped lower. So as long as it holds this 75 area, I think it has a shot of working out still. Our stop is uh, currently beneath the those of the, of the past week. And the last long position is in GH which we are long from about an average price of 85.60 or so. And here's the pivot from uh, the 618 high, which it has failed to uh, push through on several occasions. But the price action remains tight, volumes dried up, and uh, we're, we're looking for a breakout above 97 on a pickup in volume to confirm that uh, the stock is on the move. All right, in terms of new setups, we're currently looking at Team reports earnings, uh, reported earnings after the close, uh, pull back to the 50 MA, a few reversal bars off the 50 MA. If it can clear this 137 area, could be in play for a swing. And GCOS, which we're already long, that all is also potentially in play. If it can get back above this high on 724, that would be about a 3.3.5% three three stop, so still pretty tight. In yesterday's report, we mentioned CW, uh, CRWD as a buy entry above 88 or on the open, at least uh, around 88. And uh, that followed through to the upside with a, a, a strong 5% gain. NVTA, interesting setup here, a uh, cup. And here's the handle, slopes lower. There's a false breakout above the handle. If the price action can hold up, around this 2330 or 2350 to 24 area and it turns back around and punches back through this 2530 uh, area it can be bought right there earnings are 86 lift pop up on our watch list uh, and this is a one two three day pullback and then a side uh, an inside day on Thursday so it can break above this two bar high could be in play for a swing and of course there is DXCM we we'll be looking to enter above 154 ish here and this is something you want to look for when when looking for an ideal buy candidate a dry up in price tight range and a dry up in volume is is an ideal situation is that when price contracts it eventually has to expand same goes for volume when volume dries up it'll eventually pick up again and for those who are just learning to read charts, what you want to look for is tight price action and a dry up in volume around a, a, a major moving average. Uh, the 20-day EMA works really well. The 10-day EMA works well. Obviously, the 50 EMA is one of the, uh, the top moving averages that traders follow in institutions. So to, to look for a tight range around the 50 EMA, uh, that could get you into a stock really early, especially when a breakout above a two- or three-day high is below an obvious high above here. So if you can get in at 153, you have a 6% stop below a swing low. If you get in at 157, you have a 8 or 9% stop. And getting in early doesn't always necessarily mean that the stock will break out. And sometimes it won't break out at all, so there's a bit of an opportunity cost. But the more you look at charts, the more you see setups, I think the better you'll get identifying the ones that are going to move out within a short period of time.
All right, that's a wrap for tonight's video. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.